Hey, this is Jason McLean, author and illustrator of Metroplex Monsters, and you're listening to Bigfoot Club Podcast. Hey, everybody. Please go to our website at www.bigfootclubpodcast.com. Check out our merch and all our episodes. Also, please look for our social media on all platforms at Bigfoot Club number one. If you have a Bigfoot or paranormal story or just need help in your area, please email us at bigfootclub number one at gmail.com. Also, check out Matt Knapp's Bigfoot Crossroads on all platforms. Please check out Blair Dominguez, my lovely wife's podcast, Silence Serenity, on Spotify. Hey everybody, Robert Jesse Dominguez, Bigfoot Club. I'm here with my nephew, Steven. Steven, say what's up. What's up? Hey, today I'm pretty excited. We're interviewing a a husband, father, author, veteran, Sean Warner. Sean, welcome to the club. Oh, thank you for having me. So, thank, thank you for being on the show, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> we really appreciate it. Yeah. How, how are you today? Um, I'm I'm doing good. I um pretty much still living the dream of everything that's happening. I'm, living, I couldn't be more excited. <laughs> living the dream. Yes, I've I've interacted with you and Liz on your TikTok lives, and uh, I got to say, you you guys are are still like you're going every is it every Tuesday and Thursday, right? Um, we have a, a standing tea time we mm-hmm. um, at uh, three fifteen every Tuesday, right? And then um, then we're on for just about every book signing that we have. We're live streaming those, and people trickle in and trickle out. They seem to like watching us. Yeah, no, you got you got some some regulars. I know. Um, I hope you don't mind me saying. I just know her first name, Lucy. I always see Lucy on. Um, and then, you know, Liz is, you know, very interactive and I think it's, I think it's so, I was telling my uncle, I go, she loves saying the word merch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I think that's so awesome that, that she, she will find a way to slip, slip in that, that word here and there. And, uh, um, <laughs> yes, how she she just loves saying it. I was like, man, this could be a drinking game, but it could be very dangerous uh, because there's been a couple times where she's dropped the merch like five different times in, in like the past three minutes or something like that. I'm like, oh, that's, that's Lord, awesome, Lord. That's yeah. that's a little dangerous. I don't know if I want to do that. Yeah, um, but I think I think it's awesome <laughs> yeah, that yeah, it's that uh, that you guys go to. You're still going to like these these uh, these little. I guess I want events or um, places to do, to do the book signings. Has that has that changed drastically since you know we're before the TikTok? Doing, um, no, we're still doing uh, the book signings mm-hmm. um, fairly regularly in different places. We um, got invited to Iola, Kansas, and into their library. It was it was just a lovely little town, and the people were just so friendly. Mm -hmm. and you know kansas is a bit of a stretch for us to drive so we folded in um full circle books in oklahoma city Mm -hmm. and then um half half price books um kansas city missouri as well as the iola library Mm -hmm. um on that uh weekend trip up so um, and then when we came back it was we took a day to drive and then we were in fort worth at a Kroger's and mm-hmm. um, Rockwall Kroger's mm-hmm. in, in the Dallas area. So we're still keeping pretty busy. Um, I think our next one is in San Antonio next week. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. At, uh, yeah, we're going to um, travel down and be given a Q&A and a read and a signing at a, a bookstore called Twigs in San Antonio. Okay. Got to, got to tell the ghoul gals that. Yeah. Um, we, we, uh, associate with a, a paranormal group or a paranormal, uh, yeah, I guess a group, uh, ghoul gals and they're based off San Antonio and we're real close with them and they, uh, they are amazing. Yeah. And they're, they're all, all girl. Group. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> Okay. So, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, let them know. I'll, I'll be more than happy to meet them and and pass on your best wishes for them. Uh, absolutely, yes, absolutely. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just uh, dive in on on the questions. Um, 
And we're, okay. we're going to talk about your amazing book. Uh, Leah, without, without giving spoilers. Without giving spoilers. Right. So, <laughs> without giving spoilers. And if I say anything too much, we'll obviously we'll, we'll, cut, we'll, 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 we'll edit it out. We'll edit it out. Um, so. But your book, Lee sure. Howard and the Ghosts of uh, Simmons Pierce Man- Manor, is just... I, I was I was de- I was shocked really on on how I was gonna like it that much, um, so we're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and uh, ask the first question here, and I, I tried I, I know you overlooked the the questions here and I tried to to I've noticed a lot of people asking the same questions and 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 you know I'm pretty sure that gets it gets a little tiring like yeah well you know right you know we're yeah it's you gotta say uh, try to I guess spice it up say say it differently answer it differently. Um, but my first question is, uh, have you ever thought of a new story starting with how you wanted it to end first? Um, typically not. I usually start my stories with a character, um, Um, an individual or a person. And then, you know, what makes that person unique and what are their challenges and struggles? And then, um, being an author, we're a cruel lot. So we think, well, how can I mess up their lives? (laughs) Right, right. Um, you know, it's, it's, but then go ahead. After that, I transition to the ending. Cause I like to, you know, know the beginning and the ending and then try to meet the two in the middle somewhere. Okay. All righty. So, cause I, I've, I've met some other people who, you know, that, um, that are typically write stories. And I, I've, I myself has, always, I've always thought of it. I've always like worried on starting a story. And I'm be like, man, like I, how does it, how do you end a story? How how do mm-hmm. you end a story? Do you ever come across like that's like it's a little challenging to write the ending of a story, or do you automatically know like uh, I guess from the beginning you already know somewhere in between or in the in, even in the beginning like oh I think I know how to, how I want to end this. Um, well, usually you end up pretty much in the same place that you start. Uh, mm-hmm. That's a uh, you know from the hero's journey um, perspective of that template of writing. You know, you start out in a place and you end up in kind of the same place, but the character is fundamentally changed through all they have experienced. Mm-hmm. So the starting and the ending are kind of the same thing. Okay, that's 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 a good answer. I like that. I like that answer. Um, my second question uh, for you is: uh, what are your what are your favorite underrated authors? I believe I, f- I know someone asked this on a, on a previous TikTok live. And I was like, man, that was one of my that was one of my questions. But, uh, but yeah, what are what are your your favorite underrated authors that you you think that they they deserve the spotlight other than you know the typical Stephen King or any of these new authors that are, are shining? I believe. Um, you know that that's really hard to say because um, I'm not a big author follower per se. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I pattern. I mean, we all have. Um, yeah, I, what I was explaining was I, I typically follow stories more than I do authors, so that's kind of a difficult answer to give. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I do have authors whose career I kind of um, use as a role model, um, in particular Anthony Horowitz, mm-hmm. uh, because you know he he's written he's written he wrote the um, the Alex Ryder things he's done some James Bond books. He's done some Sherlock Holmes books, but he's also done screenplays for TV. He's, um, he has a TV show out there called Foil's War, which is just an amazing show. Mm-hmm. He, and he did, um, a, he's done a graphic novel. So in all, all phase, all realms of the written word, he, he has been successful in it. And so, yeah, that's, that's something I would like to do with my career. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Um, you, you have anything to pick up on that? Or? I, I was just going to say, um, and I know, um, I, I, cause from an author uh, perspective, Sean, what, what advice would you give any writers that are writing and they want to get their stories published? Um, it, uh, the first thing is to study the craft of writing. Um, you know, I was like, I was just talking about the hero's journey, uh, which is from, uh, Joseph Campbell's book, the hero with a thousand faces, uh, save the cat writes a novel is a great resource to learn the craft of writing. The first one that I ever read that I go back to is Larry Brooks, 
um, story engineering. And you need to read, you know, books on plot structure and how to lay out your books. And, I mean, if you're going to be a professional, I mean, if you're going to be a doctor, you go to med school. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to work in retail, you're going to have to study um, merchandising, inventories, how to run registers and stuff like that. So any walk of life, you're going to have to put in the effort if you're going to be a professional at it to know the um, the groundwork. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's... We'll, we'll we'll have to we'll have to like look into that because you know we, I know you remember we I spilled some tea like he goes oh yeah I've always wanted to, to uh, deep down I've always wanted to be like a, a writer or an author he's like well you spilled the tea, you know like well, people already know now so you got to do it <laughs> I was like oh yeah dang it I didn't even realize that <laughs> I think there was like uh, maybe like over like two hundred viewers on it I don't I don't mm -hmm. know if they they saw it or what my comment on it but. Um, the third question I had was, uh, do you listen to any type of music to get in the right, uh, headspace when writing? If so, what type of music, or do you even listen to music at all when it comes to writing? I pretty much have music going all the time. Um, mm -hmm. I, um, first of all, I love music mm -hmm. and, um, it's been a huge part of my life, but I also have tintinitis, which is ringing in the ear. So it, it does good to. Um, drown out some of that ringing. Okay. As far as what do, it's whatever I'm in the mood for. Um, you know, we were just listening to some old big band stuff, um, and you know, on my, it's kind of funny on um, my. Oh, what is it called? The where I listen to the music. Why am I going blank on this? The Spotify? app on my phone, Spotify. Oh, Spotify, yes. You know, my playlist, my playlist on Spotify. I have. Um, I have a playlist called uh, Midnight Addiction, which is 60s, 70s music, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and Jefferson Airplane and that sort of stuff. I have one called Bourbon on Ice, which is jazz. I have one which is I call Bar Fights, which is country music. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, the harder rock stuff is in a playlist called Speeding Ticket. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so it just depends on what I'm in the mood for. Do you remember what type of music you were listening to whenever you first started uh, writing Lee Howard? I I really don't. Okay, it very. And when I when I get into the zone of writing, honestly, it turns into background noise. Ah, uh, okay. Um, it, it's just it just like I said, it just works to cut down the ringing in my ears. But um, when I'm when I am in that zone of writing um you know in the spirit of writing it, yeah everything just turns into background noise and it's just flowing out and, and i'm hearing the story in my head faster than i can type it mm -hmm. <laughs> okay well, that's that's good like that's a that's a good um i guess that's a really good mix of a of a playlist i mean there's like there's no <laughs> Yeah, there's no, uh, I guess, boundaries when it comes to when you're writing something. With me, I, for some reason, I always get the idea of like, oh, every author is listening to classical music or some yeah. some type of uh, like symphony well, or something. So, some authors do. They they have a a mood playlist that mm -hmm. it's what they're writing, and and it it helps them get into that feel and into that. Um, into that tone because you want to keep a consistent, you know, tone throughout your book. You don't want to go from manic to depressive to, you know, long-winded and, and you, you know, it's like changing accents when you're trying to talk. It's you know, you, you want to keep that consistent. Some people find listening to a certain playlist gets them into that feel, mm -hmm. into that group. So, and whatever works for them, you know, everybody's different and whatever works for each individual is what you should go with. Right. Um, that makes, yeah, that makes total sense. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm kind of getting, taking notes too, mental notes on that, like, you know, to, to go back into writing too. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's very useful information on that. Um, my, the next question I had, and, and this is, I, I'm pretty sure you've, you've either mentioned more on it and I missed it. But on, on your in your recent lives on TikTok, you spilled some tea in regarding a, a comic book, uh, a DC comic book about Robin. Could you give us a little bit more on that? Um, sure. 
I um I wrote a movie script um uh-huh. about the origin story of Robin, mm-hmm. uh, Batman sidekick Robin. Um and what I did is I went back to the I think it's nineteen fifty three is where he made his first appearance in an action comics. Mm-hmm. And and I looked at that story and try to be as authentic to that story as I could be, because I know from hanging out and talking to um, comic book fans that they don't like when the original stories get turned around or twisted up or Mm -hmm. they think they're improving on it when since, you know, 1953, this has been just fine for all of us. (laughs) Exactly. Where I had to embellish, I went to um, different places on the web that had like a Wikipedia sort of background on Robin's story through the years. And so where I had to embellish to make up, um, you know, broaden the story, I was as true to what DC has put in there as I possibly could be. Wow. Okay. That's that's awesome. And now... Um, I'm, I'm going to piggyback off of that question. You said you wrote a screenplay. Is that completely different on, on writing than obviously writing an actual novel? Like, did, was that like, did that change your tech technique in any way? Or is uh, like, can you expand on that? Um, yeah, it, it's a very different thing. I mean, it's kind of the same and I'm very fortunate that one of my strengths is dialogue. Mm-hmm. But when you write a book, you can, the narrator can fill in some gaps and things like that, you know, of what's going on, what's happening, and giving some explanation. When you're writing a screenplay, all you have are um, the characters' movements and body language and what they're saying. Mm-hmm. There's there's no filler that a narrator can fill in. Um, you know, the, the, the days of the actors going off to the side and doing a soliloquy ended with Shakespeare. So, mm-hmm. it's, you know, so it's, you're very, you have to be very clear on your scenes and what you're doing. And then from the technical side of things, the formatting is completely different. They have their own formatting, the way they want to see things, their own jargon, their own lingo. Um, so it, it's, it's different writing. Uh, but it, then again, but the story structures are exactly the same. Going back to the fundamentals in those books I, I mentioned earlier, that structure is identical. Mm-hmm. Okay. I gotcha. Yeah. Okay. That, that makes sense on that. Um, have you, I'm assuming you've, you've always been, I guess, a, a comic book fan. On and off throughout my life. I have, um, I, I do like, um, comic books. I, I read a lot of them when I was um, younger. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was uh, again the same reason I was reading books is you know, the escapism and and the vicarious adventures and things like that. Um, you know, actually, I was reading. I was. I remember being at a friend's house when I read a um, Savage Sword of Conan comic mm-hmm. book, mm-hmm. and. It wasn't until I read that that I discovered that Robert E. Howard actually wrote novels, <laughs> Conan oh. the Barber. So that, you know that's how I got into reading um, reading those. You know, and then going the other way around, I was reading um, Tarzan of the Apes stories uh, wow. when I was really young, and um, and my wife is muttering somewhere. <laughs> And um, probably how those books are still cluttering up our library. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but, you know, I, I was reading those. And then I discovered that there was a Tarzan comic book put out. So it, it went both ways. And it was complimentary. And it was really a great experience when I was younger to see that. Wow, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, because my uncle and I are, are big uh, comic book fans. And you, you hit it right in the nose when... When there's a source material that uh, like that we grew up on that we we or I grew up on reading and I understood the the origin of it and, and I always loved it and then they ch- Hollywood or something changes it to where it just mm-hmm. doesn't it doesn't make sense like they try to throw in their their spin on it 
their little their little ingredients and it just doesn't it doesn't work well and i think i think yeah i think you hit it right in the nose like we're, we we and, and a lot of people are saying like uh with, especially with recent dc movies like you know that there's a certain toxic fandom i don't i don't call it toxic i just call it passion there's a real mm-hmm. big real big difference on that is that we have a lot of passion when it comes to the source material right and uh yeah i, I think everybody does and you know, it doesn't matter if it's Marvel or DC or whoever. When when things change from the original, and and some of it has to. I mean, because you're shifting medium, and, and, and some changes have to be made. But these wild um, changes from things, it's, it's just yeah. I, I I don't think fans are receptive to that at all. Yeah. And, and it's not, and it's not just. Uh, I, I said that wrong. It's not just co- comic books or anything like that. It's actually, it's like from books, video game movies, vi- video games. Well, like it, there's a certain any type. Other. Yeah, just just any any type of fandom. If if there's passion in it and there's love in it, and then uh, they they want to see it on the big screen or something like that. If something changes, yeah, there's going to be some type of disappointment and 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 mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. why? Like why would you do that? It's yeah. right there. So um, right. Um, we, we fell in love with this story. Why are you showing us that story? Exactly. Like, that's just like, why would you do? <laughs> I, I can, my uncle and I can go on and on about that. Like how it's, it's just yeah. like, why, why <laughs> it's, it is right. The layout, the funda the fundament, uh, mental layout of it's right there. Just follow it. <laughs> um, yeah. but, uh, the, the, my big question here too is, um, and I think uh, as for me, I, I suffer. I didn't realize this was a big thing until I started writing the story. Um, but writer's block, how do you handle writer's block? Um, well, I, I well, the first thing is I accept that it's going to happen because it's part of the writing process. It, it, it happens to everybody. So there's no point in thinking it's just you and getting down on yourself. <laughs> mm-hmm. The only Right to, in my opinion, the only thing to really do is to write yourself out of it. Um, mm-hmm. I cannot count the number of times that I had, I didn't feel like I had anything flowing, and I sat down and forced myself to write stuff anyway. And then the next day I came in and it was absolutely select all delete. But I wrote something and I kept at doing that. Um, Another thing that helps me with that idea of write yourself out of it, if you, if what you're working on isn't speaking to you, write something else. Write a short story. Write a poem. I usually have three or four different works going that I'm shuffling around, and um, if one's just not working for me or I, I I don't know where the plot's going and the the characters and and the story isn't talking to me i'll move over to another one and i'll work on it for a day or two and then i'll come back to my prime project and just but to keep writing now if if that doesn't work and also um doing other creative things uh, like drawing sketching doodling uh, listening to music Mm -hmm. playing music if you're um, talented in that way um, any of these creative things that you do, painting, sculpture, whatever it is, any creative thing that you do opens the, um, the blockage in other creative avenues. Um, exercise, walking, going to the gym, things like that also gets endorphins flowing in your brain. It opens things up. Um, that's, that's another tool or trick. But the big thing is not to give up, not to get down on yourself. It's part of the life, and, you know, some days even people who love their jobs wake up. I do not want to go to work today. Oh, you know, yes. and it, it happens to everybody, and there's no reason it shouldn't yeah. happen to writers, too, and it does. So yeah. just persevere, push through it, and then write your way out of it. That's – thank you. I, I think I needed I needed to hear that because <laughs> I have, I have I a story. A that. Yeah. I think a lot of writers get really down on themselves in this the more negative you get on your writing, mm-hmm. the more negative your writing turns. It, you know, it, it's you're either going to lift it up or push it down, and um, I think you need to lift it up. You know, right? No, I I, I 100% agree. Now, I think I, I'm looking at it in a different perspective. That's good advice. Um, because uh, you know, the story I shelved a long time ago, uh, man, I think I wrote, started writing it after high school. 
I, mm-hmm. I, I just never, it's like you said earlier, like, you know, the, the shift all the, uh, delete. Cause I remember mm-hmm. writing like two chapters. I'm like, and then I reread it and I go, this is crap. And I just deleted those two chapters and then left it there. <laughs> um, yeah. because it's just, it's one of those things where, yeah, like, yeah, I was, I was really, really, uh, hard on myself and, and beating myself up on when, when it comes to like, man, like if I can't get the middle part, I'm not going to be able to get to the the ending. I'm not going to be able to well, make sense. The middle is the uh, middle is universally known as the hardest part of the book to write. Mm, yes, the beginnings are, are usually pretty good. People know what they want. The endings are usually pretty good. They know where they want to end up. But that middle part is really the toughest part of a book. Mm-hmm. I always like and make this comparison. You know, since it, writing is an art, you compare it to pottery. And what's the first thing people do when they start deciding they're going to do pottery? They make an ugly ashtray. Yeah. And then they, <laughs> then they make an ugly bowl. They make a lot of ugly pottery before it starts, hey, this is looking pretty good. This is, I can recognize that's a vase now. But, you know, it's not <laughs> it, it is, There's no reason writing should be any different. It's an art, too. Yeah. You know, we, um I'm sure Leonardo da Vinci started out drawing stick figures when he was a kid. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I would, I would actually have to agree on that. You're, you're in, inspiring. You're, you're an inspiration, Sean, uh, when it comes to that, like, <laughs> yes. cause you know, it's just, you know, like, um, it's, it's just, I guess it's just never uh, too late to give up on something that you really love and stuff. Yeah. And no. I would, I, would, I was just going to say, Sean, right, currently right now I'm writing, comic book stories for my older brother. My older brother does a, a comic book called uh, El, El Gato Negro. And uh, he came to me and goes, hey, I, I wrote a story for him, sent it to him, and he loved it. He says, hey, can you do more of this? I go, yes, absolutely. And so he gave me a story of uh, this uh, Aztec warrior uh, by the name of uh, Tanatu. He's the sun god of uh, uh, you know the Aztecs. And he asked me, he goes, hey, write this story. He gave me 15 characters think up the powers go and so i had to think how would i how would i write what an aztec god says how would i and Mm -hmm. i i was on a i was on the longest writer's block (laughs) and i was trying to think how do i write you know what an aztec god's gonna say to somebody so (laughs) and you know what's funny what's funny sean is that when it comes to like me writing a story or my uncle he's writing his story he would come to me and i would come up with the best ideas and he would like, oh man, I didn't even think of that. That's great. And then when it comes to my story, I go, I can't even think the best <laughs> ideas for myself. I, I don't yeah. understand. So we bounce well, ideas off each other like that. And uh, we've always, <laughs> I think we should probably just do like an author duo book. Yeah, or something. we should. We should. So. <laughs> um, well, but one of the things about the the writing life, and it's um, it's misunderstood that it's a lonely profession, and it should it, it really shouldn't be because if you're not in critique groups, writer groups, networking with other writers, talking about your stories, playing things off of each other, you're really going to struggle. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my wife would be the first to tell you, once I started going to a critique group and getting feedback on my writing, my writing improved immensely at that point. Okay. So, you know, it, it's real important to get out there and not to do this alone and to bounce ideas off other people. Um, people who aren't invested in making you happy, <laughs> you know, right, right. Uh, yeah. you know, cause your family is going to say, Oh, you're great. You're one of us. Yeah, that's you true. Some, <laughs> some harsh, you know, cre- this, is, this piece is really good, but this piece over here, rethink that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that what Liz did? Um, that's what my critique group does. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. My, my, I'm in two critique, two critique groups, um, in the area. And um, that's what we do um, is we just read our stuff to each other. We get feedback. We get insight, the benefit of other people's experiences, different perspectives. It, it's it's just such a great um, aid, and I think professional writers need to do that. Uh, that's that's great advice on that because whenever I, I think you you actually said this on one of your lives, on one of your T uh your tea spill the tea lives um is uh, you, that about critique groups i didn't even know about that i didn't even know about that until you, uh, until i heard you say that like, oh, wait there's critique groups on oh yeah on, for, for for authors I, I did not i did not know that 
So that there's, is there's something. Yeah, that is yeah. something I'm definitely going to look into. Um, and, and really, uh, cause like I said, you know, ever since reading your book and then, you know, hearing your story and stuff like that, it just really inspired me to go, man, like I, I want to get back into, into writing again. Cause you know, I love, I love reading books, you know, and I've always mm-hmm. wanted to, to write books and, and, and yeah, like I, I, it's, it's something like a sort of passion of mine that I've, I've always kind of like pushed off aside and be like, I, I could never be a writer. I'm just going to just read. Yeah. Um, but, uh, my next question to you, Sean, and however you want to answer it, it's, it's, it's up to you, but do you ever come across an idea or a moment for a story that feels too controversial in today's society? Um, I don't spend too much time thinking about those sort of stuff. I write, um, you know, realistic characters of things mm-hmm. going on in the real world. Um, but I write, um, I write stories that are, I hope, are engaging and are fun to read. There's a lot of issue books out there, and that's fine. There's a place for those. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of um, classics out there. There's all kinds of writing out there. But my goal is, with my writing, is to inspire people to read just for the enjoyment and the escape from those kind of things. So, no, I don't, I don't, and deliberately think about it or not think about it. Um, right. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't avoid it, but I don't go looking for it either. I just write pretty much what I think is happening in the situations that I create um, realistically um, without trying to have a message or anything like that. Um, I guess that's, that's not quite the right way to put that. But, no, it's like, it's, I, no. what, what you're know, saying I, is like, like an escape. You, without an escape. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't, Everybody with an agenda. I just want to right. tell a, a interesting, fun story without having an agenda or anything attached to it. I that's uh, I agree with that, and I'm gonna, I'm going to piggyback off that that same question and ask you this question: Do you believe or do you think that there's too much outlets that are are doing that today for like um, you know you don't have to say media, but like let's say entertainment, like movies and, and shows like that or, or books. That did, that just forgot to be like, hey, let's write a, a story or or just make some type of entertainment that just focuses on the enjoyment of 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 escaping that escapism and all that. Do you believe that that there's a lot of that, way too much of that nowadays? I don't spend time thinking about that. Um, you know, people are expressing themselves, and I'm behind people mm-hmm. expressing them the way that they see fit. Um, and I don't waste a lot of time thinking about what other people are doing or if there's too much of this or that. I'm just, I just do what I do. Um, you know, like I said, I come up with the, the adventures that I want to write about and then I write them. Um, and I don't uh, busy myself thinking about, well, what are other people doing or how is this going to be received or things like that. Um, I write, I try to write as honestly and as genuinely as I can. Um, as expression of me and I respect other people doing the same. That, that is a be- beautiful answer. It is. I, I don't think I could have said it, yeah. <laughs> said it better. I like, I like that. You just, you write what you do and you do, you do what you write on that. That's, that's great. Sean, I was going to ask you, um, did you do any like research on the paranormal before writing this book, uh, of Lee Howard? Uh, not, not necessarily. No. Um, I, I mean, it, it I kind of stuck to things that, like I, like I said before, you know, things that I believe and my perspective on things. Mm-hmm. And in whatever was kind of the, I guess, common knowledge out there on um, the paranormal and stuff like that. So, no, I didn't really do a lot of extra uh, research into that aspect of the book. Mm, okay. No, that's 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 good right there. I mean... Everybody knows ghosts. Yeah. Everybody knows a ghost not, story. Not everybody's, you know, experience with ghosts or knowledge of ghosts is mm-hmm. the same with another person's view on it. So mm-hmm. it's just, I think it's good. I mean, yeah. it's it's Sean's point of view, and I, I like that. Yeah, that's that's perfect. Perfect. Um, has this recent success overwhelmed you in any way, in a positive way, negative way, however you want to answer it? Um. I wouldn't use the word overwhelmed because I'm I'm a pretty steady 
individual and I take what comes in stride. Mm-hmm. Um, but it has definitely been a huge um, in change in the way things go. Um, we were, I was just talking about it today with some, some people who are asking me about that. Um, yeah, in my professional life, you know, I went from obscurity to being on the Today Show pretty much overnight. Mm-hmm, yeah. uh, huge, huge changes in there. Um, people recognizing me um, every once in a while when we go out and people say, hey, are you that guy? You know, that, that's a huge change. We're not the book it, store. You know, it, yeah, it, it's a huge change in that respect. But then again, you know. I come home, I put on some work shoes, pick up my package left in the backyard by my dog so I can mow. So it's the same. Right. Mm-hmm. No, that's... You know, you know, so I just take whatever's happening, I just try to take in stride and, um, you know, be aware of, um, you know, how blessed I am that this is happening and, um, you know, just accept it and um, try to do the best I can. Yeah, because I've I've seen, like I said, I've been watching your lives recently, and y'all been at, at the grocery stores or you know uh, some book signing or something like that, and wherever wherever the lives you're at, it's mostly like the grocery stores that I've always caught, and there's always people you know shopping, and they're like, oh hey, and I always see that, hey you're that guy, you know, yeah, and stuff like that, and and it's it's awesome that people are it, are noticing that, uh, but I you know, do you feel that it will it will somewhat, you know, because like you said, you don't want to say like you, you're not overwhelmed. But when uh, if if this becomes like a like a movie or, or a show or anything like that, like it, it's it's gonna blow up. You know, a lot of people are gonna be like, oh yeah, that's it's that guy, it's that guy from from yeah. TikTok. Like, do you, do you are you worried that that might change into overwhelm, or are you just like like I'm just gonna take that as another thing, that whatever comes my way. I'm, I'm you know, as as that- yeah, um, I I think that's the case uh, what what's going to happen is going to happen um i couldn't have orchestrated what happened thus far mm-hmm. and i really control what's going to happen in the future all i can do is um you know approach it and try to be as genuinely me as possible as as it happens yeah sean i was just going to say that like whenever my uh, nephew brought your story to me like we were we because right now we're we always try to find different people to come on the podcast whether it's bigfoot or the paranormal or just people in general just are just uh interesting and he came to me goes hey because we got to get this guy on he's he's blown up on tiktok i goes he's local and i go okay and then i think one saturday you told me right Stephen, you said he's gonna be at uh SwapCon. The SwapCon, yep. And I go, well, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I go, let's go meet him. So, yeah. <laughs> so and that, that was, uh, I was very, very like, you know, he was, I think there was a couple of times like, why don't you just buy the book on Amazon? I was like, no, I don't know how that works. I really want to go to the, the uh, go to him right, and right. actually buy the book and make sure he gets the money, the, the money and the funds like they, that he deserves. Because oh. I, I really, I don't, at, at that time, I didn't know how that works. I didn't know if Amazon gets cut. I don't know what, what, I didn't know anything on that. Uh, so I just like I'm just gonna go. I want to go. <laughs> yeah. So I just wanted to make sure. Like I was like I, I like no, he deserves it. Yeah. And I, I'm gonna go. We're gonna go. <laughs> so so we go, Sean, and we go in, and you know we take Stephen's boys. They're like they're twins. They're six year old, mm-hmm. and they have to pee. Of, of, of course, they have to pee all the time. <laughs> and go. We got to pee. So we we like you know we pay. We get in. And I, we asked the lady, I go, I go, where's the restroom? And he goes over, over to the left. I go, okay. So we go to the left and then I see you. I go, there's Sean. There's Sean. Yes. <laughs> so. Yes. We were, uh, we were very, <laughs> we just had to thank the boys. Like, well, thank you for having to go to go pee. Cause we would have gone right. We would have gone right and go like, man, where is he? Where yeah, is he at? So, um, so I, I just wanted to say, I felt like a little bit, like we were stalking you a little bit. So, yeah. <laughs> Cause we were showing up at, at like three of your events and yes. just trying to, you know, just trying to talk to you and stuff and go, let's just go and talk to him. Yeah. Let's just, let's just, uh, let's just I, go. I, I said as you being, uh, very supportive and I was grateful for it. So don't worry about that. Okay. Thank, thank you. So, um, I was going to ask you too, and I asked, I, I sent this question in and I don't know if you, like, I don't know if you saw it, but I wanted to, like, I wanted to read a piece from the book 
And I wanted to see if that was okay because I don't think it's really much of a spoiler. It's just a conversation between Lee and, and Ty. And, okay. uh, and I wanted to, uh, so my question on here was for, um, chapter three, page 31, the conversation between Ty and Lee is just so well written. It really resonates with me who has suffered loss. Uh, I myself have suffered loss. Uh, was this kind of quote from like a personal experience? And it was, it was the, the conversation where, where Lee asked Ty, like, how did you do it? And, and he responds with like the most simplest, like, Great quote. Time, mostly. Minute by minute, till I could manage day by day. People help, too, like my wife and your mom and your dad. I let them in, and they help me out. I know I can count on you, Ty, Lee said. Uh, it isn't a competition, Lee. And he says, I don't care. It's me, Meyer, or Gardner. I assume a place like this, there's there's a gardener. And like He's just he's like, like letting her know, like, let the right ones in to, to help you out. Like, did you, mm-hmm. did you have like a personal experience? Like, did, was that from a personal experience of, I guess, letting, you know, letting people in if you've suffered loss or suffered some type of grief? Um, I, I don't know if it was from, I wouldn't say it was from loss or grief that I've suffered. It was just through life experiences. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I have the, the, you know, very good fortune to have some amazing friends, mm-hmm. um, or, or, you know, supportive that I know I could go to, um, you know, and a lot of that is, um, you know, some of that is definitely has to go back from when I was a um, pediatric therapist working with kids and they needed to know the importance of the peer group that they choose to hang around because in some sense we really are um, – a reflection of our peer group and who we choose to hang around and um, they're going to bring you up or they're going to pull you down. And right. And, and these are, these are things that I really believe in is that I think there's, you know, I, I do think that a lot of cohesiveness of friendships and bonds and things are, are thinning a little bit. And um, we need to be aware of just how important, other people in our lives actually being in our lives are. Yes. I, yeah, I, I really, it, that when I read that, Sean, I, I'll, I'll admit like whenever I first read that, it, I had to put it down. I was just like, man, that like this, you know, that spoke to me in a, in a very, in a very uh, positive way, obviously, but it really spoke to me. Cause I was just like, you know, some people, when they go through grief, they go through loss, they, they push people away, you know, they because they, mm-hmm. they they believe mm-hmm. in in spiraling out of control right. of of and and handling it, it their own way and i think people yep. need to be reminded in little 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 situations like that from that little page you know that it's okay it resonated with you yeah it resonated with me cuz you know i i suffered yeah. i suffered a lot of grief i suffered a lot of loss and i that i had to go to therapy and and one thing about our show is that we really, really pushed on the whole, you know, you know, mental, mental, mental health, health and yeah. all that stuff. And, mm-hmm. um, it, it just really spoke to me. And I, and like, I, when I put that, that down for later, oh man, I, I want to hug this man now because it just, it really, <laughs> yeah. it really just really spoke to me. Those just that, just that little conversation between Ty and Lee, it just really spoke to me. Like it was like speaking to me, like I was, like I was actually talking to Ty. And uh, I thought that that was amazing, and I think a lot of a lot of people forget on how to handle situations like that because people don't realize that it could happen, and mm-hmm. it's very yeah. very inspiring. It's very inspiring. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, thank you. That's that very kind of you to say that. Yeah. No. No. Thank you. That's that was just. I don't think you realize it. You just wrote like just a beautiful conversation yeah. there, <laughs> Sean. He he like messaged me in the, like almost in the middle of the night. And tell me, he goes, you got to read the book. You got to read the book. And tell me. <laughs> I go, okay. I think it was that moment too. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. Was like, oh Jesus, like, I need a moment. <laughs> I mean, because like, if anybody listens to our podcast, which a lot of people do, and they they know that we we pretty much we tell all our lives on this podcast mm-hmm. and and all the events that go through our lives, whether we lose people or not, or because uh, I was sick in 2021, and we mm-hmm. talk about that immensely, and um. So yeah, when it touches him, I said, "Uh oh, it touched him." So I guess, yeah, I it, guess I better sit down and read the book. It, then. <laughs> so, it touched my soul. So, um, but it was just, it was just, oh man, that's that's 
it, it, you can call it simple, you know, when, when you read it, it's like, oh, it's just so simple, but it's, it's just, there's meaning behind it. And it's just, it, like I said, it, it really, really impacted me. And, and yeah, I, I think that was like maybe close to midnight whenever I messaged him. I was like, you got to read the book. Yeah. You got you to read this book. <laughs> so you have to read this book. I'm already 31 pages in. You have to read. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, that was, that was just fantastic, Sean. I really appreciate you just writing that. Like, I know it's part of the story and, and it's part of your story on that, but it really just like, it made an imprint on my soul on that. So, uh, um, let's see here. didn't mean to go off track there, but, uh, do you, do you keep, I think you mentioned this on one of your lives too. Do you keep a journal and jot down ideas for new stories or like does, when you when you get a, a new idea, because sometimes this happens to me, and I, ha- I had like a journal, but I lost it because we moved so many times. But I, I always had an idea and I jot it down because mm-hmm. I was like, I'm going to forget this. Do you do you have like a specialized journal where you jot down your ideas for new stories or anything like that? Um, no, I, I don't have a journal that I write down my ideas from um, because a lot of my ideas. I, I get in a little piece here or there. Mm. And if it's recurring often enough, if the same idea comes up or the same characters come up repeatedly, then I know there's something there and I'm not going to, I'm not going to forget them because they've come up, you know, over and over and over again in my imagination. Um, so no, I, I don't jot down ideas like that. I, I wait for them to hit me two, three, four, five times, and then I'll start paying attention to them more seriously and, and asking myself, can this work? And, you know, what is this person's story and fleshing it out? And this is all in my imagination before I do any writing of any kind. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you know, so it, with me, if it's if it's something that I feel is strong enough for a short story or a book or whatever, uh, it'll be a recurring thought in my mind um, for months beforehand. And I don't need to write it down because it keeps popping up. Well, what can I say? I say you're blessed on that because sometimes whenever I get an idea, I, yeah. I forget it. And it always like, it comes to me well, in a way. Yeah, you forget it. I forget them too. But oh. Then I forget they come back. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So you have that ability. I don't. <laughs> I always the same character pops up and it's like, Oh, what about this? Remember that you were thinking about this and, and it comes back and mm-hmm. it comes back and it comes back and then after a while it's like, Okay, this is <laughs> this is the universe telling me this is the Holy Spirit telling me something here. Right. <laughs> no, that's good. That's that's awesome. Uh I wish that happened to me, but I guess I don't know. I guess I gotta really, really fully and like just go in and, and allow myself to, to to I guess get in that space to where it does do that um, because I always I always kind of brush it off and I'm like yeah man I I'm never gonna remember that I got to write this down so mm-hmm. I always write I always write it down and even then when I write it down how it played in my mind is different from when I'm trying to put it on paper or or type it up so I'm like no that's not what it, that's not how it it's there but it, it it just it doesn't fully come out the way I want it to I guess on on mm-hmm. by typing it so. Um, that's well, awesome that's, though. That's, that's just what works for me. I, um, right. You know, I can offer these things out and my perspectives on them, but, um, realizing that everyone is an individual with their own things and, and that may resound with somebody and somebody else might say, no, I need to write this down. I need to take it down in the moment. I'll never see it again. And whatever works for you is it, so much of, um, I think there's knowing ourselves and what works for us and um, accepting that as what we are instead of trying to say, well, this guy does it this way, so I have to do it this way. You have to be genuinely and uniquely you. And right. whatever works for you is what you need to do. But you need to explore and what works for you and accept what works for you and get to know yourself to that point where you know what works for you. Mm-hmm. That makes total sense. Yeah, I, I think, I think uh, we're always too focused on well, how does he do it, rather than well, how would you do it and how would you want to do it? Um, and I think that's perfect. I think that's, uh, I think a lot of people do that because I, 
I love Stephen King. Stephen King is what really got me into into reading. I like his stories. Um, so I I think I I got an audio book of him of how he writes, and mm-hmm. and how he uh, how he sets us up for, for writing. He he doesn't believe in in deleting or uh, he said just write. He he'll just say just type it out. Just type it out and just finish the story. Don't don't try to re rework or rework it or, or erase it or something like that. Just just type it all out. Like it's all going to come out. Yeah. Um, and he just said and. My understanding is Stephen King is one of those writers who just sits down and writes. Yep. Uh, discovers the story as it unfolds on his um, typing in front of him. Yep. Other authors I know just map out each detail meticulously before they ever start typing. Yep. And between those two extremes are a whole world of writers. I do both. I write a little, plot a little, go back to writing a little, back and forth and back and forth. Um, so I do a little bit of both, a hybrid approach. Right. So I, I, whatever you feel you need to do to keep yourself on task and organized and moving forward, um, the big the big part of that is keep moving forward. Oh, yes. That's, Absolutely. That's, that's the perfect way to say that. And and. You know, what you said, too, about, you know, not giving up and stuff. You know, he even Stephen King actually said that in the audio book that I, I can't remember if it was Carrie or Cujo, where he wrote the book and didn't like it and threw it in the trash. And his wife took it out of the trash and he's like, why would you throw this away? And he's like, I didn't like it. I'm, I'm going to do another story. She's like, oh, well, I'm going to read it. And she read it. She liked it. She pushed him to get it published. And it, and it, and it I guess that launched his career. I think it was Carrie. I want to say it was Carrie. The book that came out was Carrie. Yes. And... Um, yeah, he was, he got so many rejections on that book Yep. and, you know, but, and this is like I was saying earlier about, you need people in your world and in your corner who are going to yep. stand up for, you're not standing up for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Cause you know, I think, I think, um, most people don't realize, I think authors, they get like when they get, they focus on their their shining success su- successful moments of and they they don't realize what comes with that is is the rejection the 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 doubts or you know like you know the late nights of like either you go through a writer's block or something like that they don't realize that it's really hard work to get where you're at and uh, mm-hmm. or at least just to get to to finish the story um, mm-hmm. and I think I think that's that you hit around the nose too is surrounding yourself with with positive people that will help you through those moments. Um, but uh, the 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 next question I, I was going to ask you here, and I believe again, I think you you've uh, said this on your live too, and I was like, man, they're they're, they're stealing away my my questions here. Um, was there was there any point in time leading up to that Kroger TikTok video? Did you ever feel like giving up? Did you feel or did you feel somewhat of like defeated? Is it for that moment, or is it like what? Did you ever feel that? Um, no, I never did. Um, I, I've always been, always been a writer, always been writing Mm -hmm. when I, um, you know, I was always working on the next book. Um, you know, when I, when Lee came out and got published before it went big, I started right in on another story and working on other books and other projects. Um, you know, and, so giving up is no, that never, never occurred to me. Now changing my approach might've occurred to me of, you know, maybe I need to do some other things or change things up a bit. Um, but as far as just abandoning it altogether, I, I knew what I was created for and it was to write. That's hmm. Sean, you're like, you're like the, probably like the greatest inspiration when it comes to writing or for writers. <laughs> Uh, because, you know, I guess, yeah, people are different. Uh, people are always going to be like, no, you know, I, I, I felt this way or there's going to be people like uh, there would be me on this on this occasion. Yeah, I did feel defeated. I felt I felt like, dang, like, OK, maybe maybe today is just not the day. I don't know. But, yeah, that's that's one of the the greatest and awesome things about you, Sean, is that you, you just you look like the person that just really never gave up. 
just you just did it. You got it done. Yeah. And and if it worked in your favor, great. If it, but in your mindset, it's like I did it. I I, I got it done. And I'm going to move on to the next well, project and get it done I, too. I I think that's you know I I think that's kind of to be honest I think that's the way writers are. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, all you know the great things that happen in the book sales and, and all this wonderful stuff that I'm just so grateful for. But the honest truth is, I had a story in my head that had to be written, and I wrote it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's they want to write their stories all the stuff that comes after that i think is actually it's kind of secondary to them telling the story that they want to tell in the way they want to tell it mm-hmm. um i think that's the drive of the writer and um Which is you know it's and and yeah my wife is is pointing out something really true it's probably why the marketing part of it is so hard for writers and it really is um but no i i think writers are going to write that's mm-hmm. just the way it is um so and what follows after that is out of anyone's control but like you said you know i wrote this book i have finished this book and i got this other story in my head and i'm writing it too and it just keeps going. A short story, a poem, whatever it is, writers are going to write. So, and and I guess that's that's kind of leading towards a question here: is that do you, do you write like multiple stories all that like at like once? Like you take a break from this story and you start writing the next story or another poem? Is that is that how you do things too as well? Absolutely, absolutely. I have so many projects going, and like I said, if one's not speaking to me, I'll work on the other. If I wake up, if I've been working for a week on a story and I happen to wake up one morning and this other story is asking for attention in my mind, then it's going to get the attention. Um, wow. I, that be my attention deficit. It might be. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> it's, it, but it's working. Uh, you know, but, yeah. Well, you know, um, I think I, I'm, I'm not always feeling it's like I'm not always in the mood for um, hard rock. Sometimes I want the yep. sadder, softer stuff. Sometimes I want the classical music. It's mm-hmm. the same thing when I read. Sometimes I want an action adventure. Sometimes I want historical stuff. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I want a classic. Um, and writing is, is it's just the exact same way. Sometimes I'm in the mood for this story, and other times, you know what? I'm, I want to change it up a bit, or I'm not feeling it. And, yeah, you know, these characters aren't talking to me right now but this other batch over here and this other story are screaming their heads off so i'll give them the attention <laughs> do you i guess on whenever you're writing to on, on your stories like do you have a set like you do you write these in your, in your office at home or sometimes do you ever go like i need to take my laptop or you know uh like outside or to the park or something like that do you, do you or do you have to stay in your office um i pretty much write just about anywhere, um, ah, okay. you know, the more distracting it is, like if I'm in a, a really busy, distracting place, like it would be hard for me to write in the mall during the Christmas crush. Oh, yeah, would, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, but, but no, I, I can pretty much write just about anywhere. Um, the, the creative piece of it, though, the, the scene structures and the, you know, the conversations, um, that I need a little bit more. Um, it, it's one of the best part of writing is you get to daydream like you're six years old. Um, but I really need some peace and quiet for that. So I go on walks or, or drive in the car. It's amazing. I'm, I haven't had more accidents. Um, you know, where I daydream about um, people, conversations, stuff like that. But when it gets down to writing it, going back to what I said earlier, that it's a recurring ideas in my head over and over. By the time I sit down to write it, I've gone through it quite a bit. Hmm. Okay. Okay. That's because I guess with me, I guess yeah, I guess it, it, I just had I have to have a, an office or something. I, I need to have total like I guess sec- secluded, have myself secluded away from from people or 
uh, my family just to get in the right headspace. But that that's just me. I hadn't even done that yet. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, and I'm, you're not I'm, alone in that. I know many authors who it's like when mom closes that office door or when dad closes that office door, you do not interrupt until that door is open again. Yeah. He's right. <laughs> he's that, that, that silence and that focus. I need the, the quiet and the solitude mm-hmm. for my day pieces of what I want to write. Um, but like I said, when I get around to writing it, I've already written it in my head three or four times in three or four different ways. So I kind of know what. Yeah. I need to, I need to tell my boys that cause uh, they believe that they have an open door policy. Uh, they can just walk in like, so dad, you know, uh, you know, just they're, they're like six. I know <laughs> they're six. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, it, no. It, it, it's tough. It, that, you know, that's a tough balance to strike. You know? mm-hmm. And, uh, um, you always want to be available to your kids. Yes. Uh, but then they also, at six, it's a struggle. But as they get older, mm-hmm. uh, they, I think all people need to learn to respect the boundaries of others. And that mom and dad actually started out as individual people, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 But, they, you know, they forget that. But, you know, that's okay. That, that, that's okay. Um, Sean, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, I guess, I'll give you the the – the opportunity here to talk about your, your new book that you're about to release, um, Homeland Insecurity. Do you, do you have any, uh, can you give us a little bit of insight on that? I know you, you explained it on, on a couple of your live or a couple of your live TikToks, but, um, when, when's it coming out and, and to, um, well, the, um, the final, I'm not allowed to tweak it anymore. Um, version was due yesterday. So uh-huh. it's turned into, publisher um we're looking at the book being released in the may june time frame of 2024 okay this um this is definitely a series that i'm have in mind of uh the series title is the langley irregulars Mm -hmm. the first book is called homeland insecurity and it's the story of a group of teenagers dreaming of becoming spies someday, but before they're ready, get trapped in a web of vengeance spun by a terrorist. Hmm. It's mm-hmm. Spycraft, Alex Ryder meets the um, teamwork of Stranger Things. Okay. Yeah. I figured you would like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to say that to him, Uncle, so you can go, oh. Okay. <laughs> um, I, it's, uh, it's, it, 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 go ahead. I, I was going to say that it's... Um, the pre-orders are already um, yeah. open on my website, so you can start pre-ordering. Um, my wife came up with this really nice uh, package. It's called the Now and Later package. That if you haven't gotten the Lee Howard book, you can get that now. And when Homeland and Security becomes available, we'll send that to you later, which I just thought was a great That's idea. That's a great idea. Yeah, I like that. And, and then the merch, too. She's in trying to try. Did you hear it say merch? <laughs> yes. She's over here merch. Saying, and the merch. There and you the go. Merch. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, but yes, uh, that's that's where I saw it on your on your website, www.shawnwarner.com. Uh, all his his you know information is there. I think does Liz run the the website or? Um. Yeah, she's it... my hand with. She takes care of a lot of that stuff for me, and by a lot, I mean almost all, if not all. <laughs> um, you know, no, that goes back to what I say. This isn't a solid, solitary um, thing. This is, um, you know, you get help. You get help where mm-hmm. you need it. I agree. Um, I totally you agree. Know, don't be, I, I, I think it's terrible. People are too proud to ask for or receive help. And they try to do all this on their own. And I was at the um, the writers' conference not long ago, uh, and I pointed out these people who are influencers on TikTok and all this other stuff, that's their full time job. That's what they do full time, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, And I'm not, I'm a writer. I write full time, (laughs) you know. Right. So I need help with this. And, And I think everybody needs help with stuff. And, uh, you know, if you're going to say that you're a person who helps others, then that means by default you have to give others the respect of helping you. Yeah, oh, wow, I like that. Wow, that's that's a good one, Sean. Um, so yeah, I, I will tell you this: I want to pre-order it, but I, I want to get the I want to go to 
one of your book signings and actually get the book there. It's 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 calling to me. I want I want to pre-order it, but you want to yeah. give them the money directly. I want to give the money directly to you. <laughs> I wasn't well, trying to say that. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, or the bigger thing is to get you know get the book in your hands yes. and and to enjoy it um, and get something out of it. Hopefully, because um, that's that's the the deeper goal I think of every writer is that. People, in, you know, actually like what they've written and mm-hmm. can enjoy it. Uh, but it's, yeah, you you will definitely you will definitely see my uncle and I there. Um, and I look I, forward to it. Yes, and I I'm definitely going to do the the before, and I think there's a before and after party. I think, or <laughs> there's some some sort of party. There's some release parties that were, release party. Uh, yes, that we're we're planning. We're not exactly sure um, how that's going to work out yet, but it's on the website. Actually, he um, could do that. He could do the release party, yeah. and then he'll get a book. Yeah, uh, my wife's pointing out that if you do the release party, uh, a book is included in that one. So, yes. oh, okay, yes, okay, okay. The, the, well, know. we'll like dress nicer this time. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I said, man, I can't believe I was wearing my weekend mm-hmm. clothes. Every time we've we've seen them, yeah, weekend clothes. Um, Sean, uh, I, well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you right now, I have no clue what you were wearing. So okay. we're, we were okay, wearing yeah. like yeah. just shirts and shorts. Yeah. And everybody was wearing blazers and dresses and a great, we go, Oh man, we're so underdressed we're on this. So, I, so underdressed on this. Um, yeah. Um, I, I just remember that you weren't naked and beyond that. I have no <laughs> that's true. That is true. <laughs> that is true. Cause we wouldn't be that far in without the police cutting in on that. But, um, um, <laughs> Sean, I, I want to thank you so much. My, uh, my uncle has a uh, final question for you. Yes. Sure. Um, but I, I was going to say, Sean, before, you know, we get off, uh, if you could send us all your links, so we'll include this whenever we post this, this next episode. So if you give me all the links okay. that you want, you know, for you, uh, Liz's book, you know, the website, Amazon, whatever, just send it to me. And uh, we'll we'll post it whenever we uh, release this episode. And thank you so much. Thank Sean. you so much. Tell tell Liz thank you. Uh, thank you for making time for us. We really appreciate it, mm-hmm. and we'll we'll All continue right. to support you. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. We love you. Thank you. We love you too. You have a good night. <laughs> All right. Night. All right. Good night.